Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this dragon beaded Kumahima bracelet. And this is what mine has turned out like. So you have the braid like this. We're using a long megatamus to get this dragon effect, kind of the back of the dragon. And then the underside is nice and flat so it's going to be nice and comfortable to wear. And then in this case I've just used these dragon clasps because I had them available and I thought they would go nicely with the theme of the braid itself. And then it's going to sit something like this on your wrist. So like I said, that flat back underside of the braid is going to be nice and comfortable to wear against your wrist like that. And then you have the actual long megatamas kind of pointing outwards giving that dragon effect. And then obviously a clasp like that would go really nicely. But you don't have to use a clasp like this. It's just what I had available so I thought I would use it. So if you want to learn how to make this braid then keep watching. And these are then the materials that we're going to need. Now what I have here first of all is my round Kumahimu disc because it is a round braid structure wise that we're making. And then here I have my cord. This is a 0.4mm Esalon just in a nice dark grey colour to go nicely as a background to the main colour of my beads as well. And then as for the beads I have a few different ones here. Now firstly these two here are going to be kind of the main part of the braid. So we have 11 O's here, these are just a gunmetal colour, again to match with the cord. And then I have 4mm rounds, these are just stardust beads, so metal ones. Again, they are meant to then match with the gunmetal seed beads and again the cord as well. The final beads I then have are my long megatamus and these are kind of the embellishment ones that are going to make it look like the dragon. So these ones, long megatamus, these are just kind of a matte AB red colour obviously choose whatever colour combination of all this that you want to. So then we need some lengths of cord. Now what I have here is four lengths of about one and a half metres each. And I'm using this because I'm using those dragon clasps so I need that bit extra length on each end of the beaded part of the braid to be able to make some knots to fill up the space in the clasp because they're quite big holes in them. If you're just using regular clasps so like Kumihimo ends like I do in most of my tutorials then just use about a metre of each of these cords. And then what I've done is I then fold them all over in half, put all the ends together and then fold them over here, just like that, to find roughly where the middle is. And then I tie a regular knot, just like that, to symbolise the middle. And I'm going to use this to put it down through the disc, because then we also have each working cord has now turned into two lengths here. And then I'm just taking a piece of scrap wire, tied it around that knot to help pull it down through the disc. You can also use a Kumahima weight or something. I've then now taken all my cords here and attached them onto my disc and what I've done is I've taken that knot, like I said, with the wire put it down through the centre and the holder of the disc and then I distributed the rest of the cords here I'm not worrying about the numbers at all I'm just kind of using these dots around the disc as reference so I put one cord on each side of every dot all the way around, just like this so then what I'm going to do now, first of all, before we start adding in any beads or anything else, I want to make a section of braid here with just the cord. So what I'm going to do is take my top left cord, the top pair here, and bring it over the disc down, stay on the left side of the bottom pair. And then I'm going to take the right one from the bottom pair, bring it up over to the top and stay on the right side here. Just like that. Turn your disc to the next pair. Quarter. Then take the top left one again, bring that down, stay on the left side. Then take the bottom right one, bring that up and stay on the right side. And you just want to keep doing this, turn your disc again a quarter to the next pair and just keep repeating. Now what I want to do is in this case I'm going to make a bit of a longer section of braid here than I usually do because like I said I'm using those dragon clasps so I need to kind of use these to bulk it out a little bit because the braid itself with this cord is too thin to go into those clasps so I'm just going to make some knots to kind of be able to put it in so I need obviously a bit of a longer length to be able to make knots with if you're just using regular Kumihimuens like I do in most of my tutorials like I mentioned then all you need is about one to two centimeters of braid here before we then get to the point after that where we need to start adding in some beads so I now kept making the beginning of the braid here. You can see it's coming out of the back with just the cord. And in this case, what I have here is about seven centimeters of braid. So it doesn't have to be this precisely, 
is this marker enough so we're able to make a couple of knots with the braid itself here that's the main purpose so we can get it into those larger ends that we're going to use obviously like I said unless you're using regular kumihimo ends to fit the braid perfectly all you need is one to two centimeters so that's completely up to you depending what clasp and endings that you're using so now that we're at this point we then need to add on some beads so this is then how I've set up all the beads here on the length of cord. Now I will also have taken a picture of this setup and I'll put that on my website where the link to that will be down below in the description box here. So if you need to have a bit more closer look and there's also going to be a description of the setup then you can go there and have a look. So then the first thing I just want to mention here is regarding the long mega tamas because what you'll find is when you put them onto a length of cord or whatever you're putting them onto the drill hole is drilled at an angle so that means that when you put them onto your length of cord they'll kind of have a point that's pointing in one or the other direction so for this braid what you have to make sure of is that all the long megatemmers are just added on in the same way so whether they're pointing towards the disc or away from the disc it doesn't matter at all all you got to make sure of is that they're all pointing in the same direction and then what you might be able to see here as well is that we do have kind of a regular pattern to all the lengths of cord here, how the beads are added. The only difference is from one cord to the other is how they start and end that pattern there. But the actual pattern itself is the same on all of them. And what that is, is you can see here, if we go from one Magatama, so we start with a the Magatama, then we have three 11 O's, one 4 millimeter round, three 11 O's, one 4 millimeter round, and then we have four 11 O's, and then one long megatama again where we then start all over so repeat that's the first long megatama then we have the three 11 o's one four millimeter three 11 o's one four millimeter and then four 11 o's and then the next long megatama so you can see the pattern here is if you kind of imagine going from long megatama to long megatama we then have two of the four millimeter in between those two that are then separated out by groups of the 11 o's now the groups of the 11 o's have three of them except each group very just right before the long megatama that group has four 11 o's and that's because three of them is just like the others they're going to be a group for themselves but the fourth one is actually going to go into the braid along with the long megatama there that's why there's four in that last group just before the long megatamas so if you kind of just remember that pattern there so that's the general pattern throughout all the lengths of cord then what I'm going to do is just go through each one and just tell you how I started it and how it finishes as well. So I'm just going to start with the top left cord here on the disc because that's the one I'm due to take next. So what we start out with is one 4mm round and then we go straight into that group with us four 11 O's and then the first long magatama. Then you continue in the same pattern here until we have four long magatamas on this one and then I end on a 4mm and then we have the two 4mm and then the groups of the 11 O's in between. The right one of the top two here, I start out with the three, the group of three 11 O's there, then I have a 4mm round, then I have the group of four 11 O's which is the group right before the first Megatama, long Megatama, and then I go straight into the pattern again. Here we also have four long Megatamas in total and I end on one 4mm, so I have a group of three of the 11 O's after the last Magatama, and then I finish there on the 4mm round. Then moving on to the side of the disc, this one starts out with one 4mm round, then I have a group of the three 11 O's, one 4mm round, and then we have the group of four 11 O's, so we then have the long Magatama right after that, and we go into the same pattern again. Then we have four long, long Magatamas in total, and then I have one group there of three 11 O's and then I finish on the one 4mm round. And the next one below that here, we start with a group of three 11 O's, then we have one 4mm round, three 11 O's, one 4mm round, and then we have that group of four 11 O's and the first long megatama after that. Then we go straight into the pattern again, and this one ends on that very last long megatama. And then reaching the bottom of the disc here, the right one on the bottom, in this case we start with a group of three 11 O's, then we have a 4 mil, and then three 11 O's, the 4 mil, but we then have the group of four 11 O's after that, just before the very first long megatama. And we then go into the pattern again, we have four long megatamas in total, and then we just finish on the final group of three 11 O's, just after that last one. And now then the left one of the two bottom ones here, as you can see I'm pretty much starting out with the first long megatama. 
I have one 11 or just before it, but if you remember what I said, we have the groups of four 11 O's before each Magatama. That's because the very last one of them needs to go with the long Magatama. So because we start out with one long Magatama here, we need to just add that single 11 O before that. We have four long Magatamas in total, and then I end on starting out with a group of three 11 O's, one 4 mil, three 11 O's, one 4 mil, and then it finishes here on three 11 O's again. On the left side of the disc here, so the bottom one of the two, we then start out with a group of four 11 O's. That's because it's the first group right before the very first long Magatama, so that one needs to go with that. And then we we'll go straight into the pattern, four long Magatamas in total, where we then end, right after the last one, we have the group of three 11 O's, one 4 mil, three 11 O's, one 4 mil, and then again finish on three 11 O's. And then the very final chord here, which is the top one on the left side of the disc, I start out with a 4 mil, and then I have my group of four 11 O's right before the very first long magatama. The pattern goes on to the end, where after the last long magatama out of the four, on the whole pattern on this one, I then have the group of three 11 O's, one 4 mil, and I finish the whole length of this on three 11 O's. So this is then the setup that we need to have if you start with the top left one the same as me or if you use the bottom right one because those two are the same ones you're going to get the same result with either of those. Now if you start with the top right one or the bottom left one what you'll have to do is set up this bead setup a little bit differently because otherwise you'll get a different result. So for that what you'll need to do is set up all these beads in a mirror image basically. So imagine that you have a mirror in front of your disc and then you need to set up the bead on all the beads that are on the length of cord in that mirror image. So what that means is the two top cords, just to position the beads, would need to swap with each other. And then also the bottom two here would need to swap with each other, just on the other side of the dots there. On the side of the disc, so the top one on each side, the bead setup would need to swap over the middle. And then the bottom two would also need to swap over the middle with each other. So again, it's just the setup of the beads here, obviously not the cords themselves, to achieve the same result here. And also I just want to mention, regarding what direction you turn your disc, it doesn't matter at all for this because it's an 8 strand braid so you'll get the same result anyway because if you turn it towards one direction, you'll actually reach the same pair as if you turn it towards the other direction. And then what you will need to do now is then start adding the beads into the braid. So then to add the beads into the braid here, what we need to do is just continue the braid just like we've been doing. The only difference is every time we now move a cord, we also then need to add in a bead. So, I need to take my top left one here, that's the next one I'm due to take. Then as I'm releasing the cord here from the disc, I'm also going to drop down my very first bead that I run into, and that's this one. And this is just a formula mirror on its own, so I'm just going to let that drop all the way down. And you want to make sure that it gets tucked in underneath the cords in the middle. Just like that, I'm going to bring it down to the bottom of the disc, and just make sure that the beads stay underneath the cords because that's what's going to make him end up on the outside of the braid and that's what we want for this one and then the bottom right one here as I'm releasing that I then need to release my beads and let them drop down as well here what I have is my first group of three 11 O's so this is what you want to make sure of so it's the exact same thing as a regular eight strand braid with beads to add in the only difference is you kind of got to pay attention to is because we have these groups of the 11 O's along with it. So for this one, because this is, if you have a look, this is just before a four millimeter round. This is just a group of three. So I need to drop these three beads down all together as if they were one bead basically. Make sure all three beads get tucked underneath and bring it over to the other side. Just like that. Now what we'll say throughout the, in my experience, because it happens to me as well, is these groups of three 11 O's, they do sometimes have a bit of a tendency to want to pop out and not stay underneath, or at least like one or two of the beads. But you just got to kind of keep keeping an eye on them to make sure they stay underneath that cord in the middle. And if they pop out, just correct it while you're there, because once you've done your braid, it's kind of hard, almost impossible to do anything about. Like that. And then... I'm grabbing, just turn my disc here, like I said, it doesn't matter what direction you turn it in. Reach my next pair, and then I release my top left cord. Let the first bead drop down. 
Make sure it tucks underneath the cart in the middle and then bring it down to the bottom of the disc. And now here, especially right at the beginning, it tends to happen more often. The group of three 11 ohms that I just did before, that were over here, they have now popped out in the middle. So, just to show you, what I prefer to do, there's a couple of things you can do. You can use some tweezers or some fine chain nose pliers to help kind of push them back. But what I find really helpful is the cord that is coming underneath them and going upwards here. I like to, what I like to do is to release that and then so it's loose and then I push the beads back down and then kind of pull this up and you might have to just do it a couple of times until they're sitting just how you want them to sit and they stay in place like I said the beginning ones are usually the ones that do it the most but it does also happen a bit throughout the braid so just keep an eye on them throughout so there, let's hope they're going to stay in place so the next cord is my bottom right one here now in this case we'll have a look I can see that the first one out of the 4mm round and the long magatamas is actually a long magatama and that means I have my group of four 11 nodes in front of that we need to make sure we don't take all four whenever you do your groups of the 11 nodes you only want to take three of them so where you have the groups of four just leave the very last one that's right in front of the long magatama because that needs to go with the long magatama so make sure to only take three let them drop all the way down all three of them there underneath the cord and bring them to the other side of the disc place your cord in and then we turn to the next pair just like that grab your cord we need to release the cord and as I'm doing that we also need to drop down the first bead and in this case it's my very first long magatama here and there's also that single 11-0 right in front of it so take both of those acting as one bead drop down in the middle make sure they go under the cord and then bring it to the opposite side there and then there we go basically the next one, the bottom right one, again is a group of three 11 O's. Let them drop down as you're releasing the cord. Make sure you grab all three, tuck them all underneath, and place your cord on the other side. And then you just keep going. So, the most important things really are to remember the difference. You always have to only grab three of the 11 O's when it's those groups. And then whenever we have a long magatama, we need to just have one 11 or just before it. So that's the main thing to remember. And then also just to keep an eye on your beads throughout, mainly the groups of three 11 O's, that they don't kind of pop over the cord in the middle as we're working with it, because they can tend to do that. And if you catch it, just fix it while you're there. Put that down, and then we just keep going. So now that I used up all my beads here and all the lengths of cord, then what we need to do is just make another section here of braid just with the cord after the beads. So all you want to do is just continue making the braid without adding in beads now. And then what you'll find is that your cords here will naturally singe in at the end of the braid. And again, just pay extra attention right at the end here. Make sure none of the beads kind of pop into the middle of the braid rather than staying on the outside as we're moving these cords. But then once you've done a few movements here, they'll be trapped in place and they will stay where they are then. So now that I have this section of braid here, then we have the actual braid itself finished. And also what I just want to mention is this length I've made about the same length as the other end, just obviously so we have the same length to make some knots with. Or if you want to just use regular kumhi ones just like the other end, just do one or two centimeters. So what we need to do now is get this off the board. So what I'm gonna do is just put this down and I want to secure the end a little bit in place before I take it off just to have less risk of the braid coming undone. So the last pair that I just used was this one here. I'm gonna to go to the opposite pair and then take cords that are diagonally opposite each other from that pair, get it across the middle and tie a regular knot and tighten that down right at the end of the braid. Then I'm going to take the cords from the same pair that are diagonally opposite each other, tie another knot with them, down right at the end of the braid, 
So we're kind of just securing the cords in place here, so we can more securely take it off the board. Go to the other pair and do the exact same thing. Tie your knot, just like that. And then again with the very last ones here. Right at the end of the others. Now the last one I just want to do a double knot here because otherwise it will come undone quite easily. So there we go. So this is now the braid itself. We have this section of the braid with just the cord at the end and then we have the beaded section right there. So this is the final braid, the beaded section here. You can see we have, it's kind of a bit like a triangle if you look from the end and then just on one side all the way around, all the way down here, we have the long megatamas which gives this kind of back of a dragon effect. And obviously you can choose whatever colours you want to and give the look that you want. And then the underside of that is nice and flat so it'll sit nice and comfortably around your wrist as well. Something like this. So now what we have to do is obviously finish it off with clasps as well. First thing I'm going to do is just put a bit of glue around the ends of the cord here where I've made my knots just so while we're working with it they're not going to come undone. So we then need to finish off both ends and make these knots, if that's what you're going to do, using this clasp here. So then to finish off the ends here, it's the same on both ends, so I'm just going to show you on this one. Like I said, this length, what we need to use that for is tie some knots with the braid itself. So all I'm going to do is I'll just leave the wire on for now. This can help you tie the knots, or if you've attached your cord or something. So you have a bit of a longer length to work with. And then I'm just going to tie the first knot and get it right up to where the braid ends, the beaded section. Pretty close to that. And then I'm going to tie another one. So it's just a regular overhand knot here. And pull it all the way through. And then tie this right after the previous one. So something like this. Now obviously what you need here also will depend on what endings you have. If you just use the normal come humans to fit the braid itself and you just have that one or two centimeters of braid, you just want to finish it off in a normal way where I already have a tutorial on how to do that so I'll put a link to that in the description box below. But otherwise if you're using something like these obviously different ones might have different size holes or how deep they are. So for that, you then want to kind of figure out how much you need to do. So it goes about this deep. So you can kind of measure and see how many knots you need to make, whether you need to have two or maybe even three. So I think I'm going to just make another one and I think that will fit perfectly for this. Again, just with the actual braid itself. I'm just using the wire here to be able to make the knot to get it pulled all the way through. You can see it's kind of getting tight now to make this knot because there isn't really much braid left. But I'd rather have that than end up with too much braid anyway. So something like that, then once you have all your knots and you feel they're going to fit inside there perfectly, then what you can do then is get rid of the wire because we just obviously need the actual knots themselves to go inside. So then when your knots are ready here, then we're going to take a clasp and just start with one of the ends. So what it's going to be end up sitting like this, and obviously you want to make sure to attach the clasp properly just so the top of the clasp also aligns with the top of the braid there. So it's just like that. So obviously we then need some more glue here. So I'm just going to be using this Tiger Bond. I've been using this a bit recently. You can use whatever glue you prefer. And then I want to first of all get some glue into the actual end. So the dragon's head basically. You want to make sure to get the glue all the way down to the very bottom of it. 
Now you obviously don't want to fill this up fully with glue because you got to bear in mind the actual braid here, the end of it is going to go inside and take up some space but I do want to get glue, like I said, right at the bottom and then also up the sides. So you do want some glue in here that's going to be able to grab onto the end of the braid. Just also try and not have it be too much because then too much will just come spilling out when we then put the braid in. So I think something a bit like this. And then I'm going to just put my actual end of the braid inside of it. And just stuff it all the way in until obviously it's going to fit. And naturally you'll have to leave this glue to dry before it's fully attached. And just make sure you leave it so the head here is sitting on it in the right way. So this is then my finished bracelet here after I've attached the clasps on both ends with these kind of nice dragon heads and then you can obviously just use it once you've completely let the glue dry so you know it's going to stay on there nice and securely and then this is what it looks like so you have this nice effect with the long mega temas going all the way around and then when it sits on your wrist it'll sit like this so they're kind of pointing outwards and you have that nice flat side underneath. So it's going to be nice and really comfortable to wear. And obviously it's a nice embellishment if you have some dragon clasp like this. It really goes with the whole theme. But otherwise, that's how you make this braid. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make these laced beaded Kumohimo bracelets. And this is what they look like. So I have two different versions here. It's the same basic braid. Then I've just added the embellishment slightly differently. So on this one, all I've done is use seed beads. You can see the effect that that gives. It gives a really nice kind of laced effect along the edge edges of the braid. And then when you do it up, it's going to sit like this on your wrist. So you have your braid running down the middle there.